Can you guess who's our guest tonight? Get an A on the test tonight. You can say you're the best tonight if you've guessed who. Here's the top of a photograph. Here's a peek at the lower half. Now a shot that'll make you laugh. Have you guessed who? Who's gonna share the times that were bad? Times when they blew it. Who's gonna share the struggle they had and how they got through it? We'll go after the facts tonight. Guess who's under the axe tonight? Just sit back and relax and see if you get right. Have you guessed who? Agatha Richards. And I'm Ed Rambo, and welcome to Guess Who. Each week we'll give you clues to our surprise guest, and you can see if you've guessed who. Tonight, we're honored to present a very special person, a star of stage, screen, and records. Nightclubs, television, concerts, you name it, she's done it. She's an actress, singer, and comedian of the first rank who's been in your living rooms many times as Dar Stay's friend. And if you were Eve Arden's son-in-law, you'd love her as much as we do. She makes you smile, she makes you laugh. And if you want to laugh, listen to this little limerick that Ed has. Go on, Ed. <laughs> See if you can get it from this. Okay, okay, so you can make a great Italian salad. But tell me honestly, okay? Can you sing a ballad? Stay tuned, we'll be right back. You work on that. Hi, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this Here's voice. Here's to the son of a bee. <gasps> Shala. Oh, what he's doing to me. This is just a small sample of the large talent of the incomparable Rosalie that, that from the Broadway large. show Carnival. That word large is so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived with that word large all my life. Large mouth, large hips, large. The incomparable. <laughs> Thank you, Agatha. Miss K. Ballard. <laughs> oh, oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, one applauding out of four. That's not bad. Oh, my dog's applauding. <laughs> You're, you're unpredictable, aren't you? I don't know if I'm unpredictable. Am I unpredictable, Ed? You've known me. Yeah, I'd say you are yeah? unpredictable, yeah. but in a good way. Spontaneous. Oh, that's, yeah. Spontaneous. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. But I can also stick to a script. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't feel bad about your eye. It's, it's yeah, I, I'm that's... having a real problem with my eye. I'd, uh, you know, you probably you got makeup in it. Yes, I need a tissue. We should have uh, <laughs> tissue, some tissue. people run on with the tissue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get, but that's happened to me, and that's really? happened to me in shows. Mm -hmm. You know, I get right in the middle of the show, and, and here I'm doing a comedy, and tears are streaming down yeah. everyone's face. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's she crying yeah. about? How have you been? I've been absolutely wonderful. You're working on a, a one-woman show. One-woman show called Hey Ma, being produced by Carl Allison and Brian Bantry, who did Greater Tune, and you can't take it with you. Uh -huh. And it's directed, uh, going to be directed by Susan Shulman, and it's written by. You met the gentleman. They're two young, as talented as you. Oh, thank uh, you. David <laughs> Levy and um, Leslie Eberhard, uh -huh. and I've written the dialogue, uh -huh. so I'm very happy. You wrote about the it. dialogue. Yes. Well, I lived it, so I had to write it. Yeah. <laughs> it's your life. It's well, really, in, it's in, my in life. In one continuous show. It's just yes, all but about you know, you. it's so funny, Ed, because the producers were impressed when they saw it because it applies to so many other people's lives. And suddenly I thought, gee, I have something kind of universal here. Mm -hmm. And it's something like I felt I had to do. Uh, but that's what makes a hit show, don't you think, when it is universal, when people can identify yes. in their own little ways. We I have mean, no idea what the critics will say, you know, because it's all one big crap shoot to begin do. with. But uh, I feel totally wonderful about this because every word is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's sentimental. And there's nothing wrong with sentiment when it's honest. Yeah. So now, I this, feel like I can't lose. This Either is way. your life mostly as an actress? Yes, it's what I've, yeah. what I've had to go through to survive in this business. Uh -huh. You see, mm -hmm. you, the terrible thing about this business is they pigeon you into a category. And you see, I've had to do things just to survive, like nightclubs and television, radio, telephone, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything. And that's what it's about. What but it's called Hey Ma. What media, medium do you like the best? 
I like anyone that's paying me. <laughs> oh, honesty. <laughs> so I'm telling the truth. I would love to do television now because you make so much money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when I was doing it, uh, you did it for Bupkis, but now you make, oh my Lord, if you come on and say dinner is served, you make more than I did when I was doing Mothers in Law. Yes. Um, well, not on this show. Well, no, this is friendship. Eh? This is friendship. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, uh, I. I really, there's nothing as thrilling as a Broadway show, nothing. Yeah, so that's, that that's the medium you like the most over that TV? Live. or. But, you know, being logical, mm -hmm. TV and movies, you know, it's lasting and it's, uh, I mean, that's truly wonderful if you can do that. But the thrill of a live audience and mm -hmm. that overture when it strikes up, there's nothing, nothing that compares like to that. Nothing. And to feel their, their reaction to what you're doing. Yes, it's wonderful. You know, the sad thing is once, it's, once you've done it, it's, it's yeah. gone. But I no, think, no, I'm sure it's, it's with you always, though, the feeling. Yeah, but this is exciting, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? this is fun. Everything is good. I mean, I'm uh, two-faced. I like everything. <laughs> that's great. You're from Cleveland, right? You came from Cleveland? Cleveland, Ohio. What did your parents feel about, that's what Hey Ma is, is pretty much it's, about, It's about, it? yes. What did your about, parents feel well, about see, you he, getting into the business? Well, my mother didn't approve. My father approved. My grandmother really approved. Um, I was an enigma to my family because no one in my family ever even finished high school except my brother and my little sister. Mm -hmm. But um, and you went I was an enigma. Family. I don't know what gave me the intestinal fortitude to do what I did mm -hmm. do you think at it a was, very early age. Do you think age. it was, I'll show you, Ma? I think so. Yeah, a lot of that. Yeah. No, and I think it's also just something that is in your personality. Certain people just have uh, a drive that... Well, you know what it is? Themselves. It's uh, unique to themselves. Doris Day has always said to me, it's, it's one big plan. I somehow don't believe that. Because mm -hmm. why is it a plan for some people yes. who are very talented never to get the opportunity? And, never make it, yeah. and some people that are, medi you know, I'd say, what is it, mediocre? Mm -hmm. they, they, everything comes their way. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I, Sometimes I think you have to make your own luck, I and that's what I'm doing now. Do, do you find that a lot of times that, that um, you said that some people have talent, don't make it. It's a combination, as you said, that you have that drive and mm. the talent, and you really want to do it. Cause it's stick-to-itiveness. Stick-to-it, yeah. right. Yes. I, I think did that's probably with, the most I did a show with Jack Guilford, and he said, kid, oh, I you know Jack. I've done He's love boat with him. <laughs> he said, kid, if you really want to make it in this business, there's only one way. He said, stick to, to it. it. Don't I think, give up. Well, that's what I feel. I feel that if you do, you'll end up winning even if you're in the afternoon of your years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we keep telling our audience that we're going to be on forever, so they better tune in one time or another. <laughs> no, it's when we're funny. 60, we'll be up here. Right. <laughs> well, that's, oh my Lord, 60 sounds young to me. I mean, it's not that far away for me. You look uh, fantastic, though. Really <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, so let's just say I'm well into my 50s. But everyone I started with says, well, I'm well into my 40s. You know, and I think, <laughs> what kind of pack do they have with God? I mean, I'm getting older and they're all so, getting younger. You don't mind revealing your, your age? Well, I opened my that. mouth when I started, mm -hmm. and it's in all kinds of books. So therefore, if you look in the uh, Oh, everybody knows. It's yeah. there anyway. It's so there anyway. Uh -huh. so. You were discovered by, was it, or you started, no, discovered by Spike Jones. Spike Jones. Yes. That's wild. And, <laughs> the name uh, Spike Jones is just yeah. wild. He was wonderful. Uh -huh. Did you travel with his band? Oh, yes. Did for you? a year and a half, I played every vaudeville house in Canada and the United States. How does vaudeville compare with Broadway? Because it was exciting, both. but you know, you did five, six shows a day, and mm -hmm. then I think back and I think, how did I do that? But it was fun. It grueling. was just like one big party. It really was. I mean, vaudevillians, and I started out really in burlesque as a straight woman in burlesque. Mm -hmm. And it was like one big party, and the moral standards were of the highest. It's amazing. Now, you've, you've never done anything off color in your act, have you? No. 
How do you feel I do about say two words in my one-woman show only to stress a point. I mean, never to just say yeah. it, it in general conversation to make a point. We'll get back to this point yeah. right after this commercial. We have a little message we want to uh, pass on to our friends out there. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh, no, it's a message about the clothes. Oh, the clothes. Yeah. Oh. Clothes, <laughs> clothes. Oh, let's see what I can talk about my clothes. Oh, yes. That's, that's I want to tell all of you to drop in the chimney. And you can pick up a lovely outfit like this. Look at the style of this outfit. It's like a little Japanese outfit. I love outfit. the colors. Mm -hmm. it's like, uh, yeah, the colors are fantastic. Really nice. And they don't leave anything to chance. They'll help you pick out your outfits and what's good for you. So we're going to show you the address on the screen right now. And tell the Magatha sent you, and they'll give you a 10% discount on anything over a $100 purchase. Okay. Hmm. How do you feel about comedians who use off-color well, sometimes it breaks my heart because some of them are so talented. Oh, I don't want to mention any names, but there are some that are incredibly talented and they don't have to do off-color material. You feel it, it's really stepping beneath them? Well, look, I'll explain to you. See, my nostalgia is gone with the wind. Now, the kids today, their nostalgia is going to be Saturday Night Fever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm which is every other word is a four-letter word. And I, I don't know, can the pendulum swing back? I have no idea. Yeah. Do you feel that I, I don't like, you know, the new MTV, which is the rage with everybody? Have you, oh, you watched mean the, that? You mean, yeah, the music. Isn't it funny how they have to do a one-act play now to get a three-minute song across? <laughs> right, yeah. At least if they did a one-act play, but the videos never match the lyrics. I mean, they're just crazy videos. Well, if you heard the lyrics, you'd have to go to confession. <laughs> right, that's it. Well, the thing, though, if you watch them and watch, that's why I like a lot of the older songs. I think there's so yeah. much fun. You can well, sing so along beautiful. with them. Yeah, you know, they're fun. They're nice. Um, you know, Agatha, well, what about uh, Linda Ronstadt is now doing standards yes. and uh, Carly Simon. I yeah. saw her. Isn't it lovely Carson. to see? It was, oh, it was wonderful. She does a great job. Yeah, Linda Ronstadt's special. She, she, yeah, she uh, Do you work with what, her in Pirates? No, but I, I got to meet her in Pirates. Mm -hmm. I worked with one of the best singers in the world in Pirates, Maureen McGovern. Oh, she Warming. was wonderful. Oh, so yeah. Nice. yeah. What I wanted to ask you about, though, is that the modern day music to me, a lot of the rock music, if you watch and perform on MTV, seems very vicious very hard and it seems a lot of people have gone in that direction yeah, especially violence. like in their jokes yes, the comedians yeah, very, you know you know they have to lash out at people to be funny I don't understand that you see that's very uh, foreign to me I don't understand I try to understand it but I guess I'm just too old I'm past mm -hmm. understanding <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, comedians who use other people uh, to get their jokes at the expense of other people I don't like that either I don't like that well, since I've had a weight problem all my life, I certainly don't appreciate somebody making a, making fun of someone as wonderful as, as Elizabeth Taylor. I mean, they don't know the, the, the torture that one feels if you're a little bit overweight mm -hmm. because the world is so oriented to someone being a size 8 and looking like a walking x-ray mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, uh, it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I don't find unkind humor funny. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think it's a lovely trend, the clothes they have on now called The Forgotten Woman. Um, well, I do my shopping. For designer. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> a little plug for The Forgotten Woman. But, but that uh, they have the heavier models and everything. It's very nice because you don't have to be a size 8 to be attractive. Well, you know, you can, if you're a size 12 or 14, that's terrific. But in today's standards, that's fat. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Look at poor Karen Carpenter. That poor girl really never always thought she was fat, even at the end. I mean, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the sad thing is a lot of, I don't know if you find this, probably a lot of young actresses or people even trying to get in business feel they're going to uh -huh. fail if they're not a size 8. Yeah. And well, you know, true. Agatha, it's like in England. That's why I love, I love London. Oh, I love Italy. <laughs> I mean, that Julie Waters is her name in... Um, uh, educating Rita, which was one of my favorite movies this year. Yeah, that, yeah. She's not thin, she's just right. Mm -hmm. But in this country, I don't think they would have given her a job unless she lost 20 pounds. <laughs> Twiggy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, a Twiggy now is just right. Twiggy's mm -hmm. like, I'd say, about 120. I mean, she's terrific. So she's been on Oh, right. I love Twiggy. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, she's she's special, too. Well, in, 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 uh, I'll have you know that in Italy and Cairo, I am a hot number. Blonde oh, hair point. and... Well, you're a woman. You're a woman. Oh, a woman. That's why, I don't know why men want little girls that look like little boys. I don't understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. that's what, well, that's what they're going to. 
Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, because they, they like people that are straight up and down. Yeah. Yeah. I love to see beautiful men, you know, shaped like that, and I love to see beautiful women shaped like that. I mean, that's what life's about. Mm -hmm. We have, a, I think, a little break right now. We'll another right break. Back. Yes, another break. And can I bring on pockets? Yes. <laughs> I guess you saw the little picture on the screen before. Well, that was Pockets, and Pockets. we'd like to call up Pockets. Come on, Pockets. Oh, Pockets. Pockets. Come on, Pockets. Oh, you Come darling. Oh, oh, you darling. Oh, look at her. Oh, Pocky, you're the sun, the moon, the star. <laughs> yeah, you have three, three dogs, Pockets, right? Pockets, Chunky, and Shirley. Oh, that's See, darling. I gave them grateful lessons. Look. Ta-da! <laughs> Just lost my microphone here. Oh, oh darling. Pockets. Let's see how you photograph Pocket. Did you see your portrait over there? Captain, looking right in the camera. Captain, the camera. Oh, give her a close-up. She's used to all of this, isn't close up, she? Close-up, guys. Close-up mm -hmm. of Pockets' eyes. Uh, She's been on what you said, Merv Griffin. Can we get a close-up of Pockets' eyes? Made a debut on this. Can we get a close-up of her? Is Someone that zoom in on her. Oh, there look at that! Oh, <laughs> little darling. Hi, <laughs> We'd oh. like to cut now to Andre, who's not only been drawing pockets, mm -hmm. but he's been drawing you. You? I haven't even seen it yet. I'm, I'm excited to so see it. I haven't seen it. Take a look at the monitor uh -huh. now. And we'll but Andre's going to give a comment. He always gives us some kind of comment on it. So, um, okay. you, you have a question or a comment or something that you want to say? <laughs> he sits and watches us. Well. I think that Kay Ballard is one of the brightest people I've met in a long time, but that's because she comes from my native Heath. Uh -huh. She understands. Ohio. <laughs> yeah, we've You're just from Ohio, Oh, yes. Yeah? yeah? There's something in the water out there that makes people like that. And now uh -oh. that there's something in the water there that doesn't make us swim. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm from Lake Erie, and they never said, you can't go near the water, you and get you can't polio. Swim. Well, I remember <laughs> out there one time when the Cuyahoga River caught fire. Yes, yeah, I mean, really. it yeah. really is frightening. I mean, nobody from Cleveland can swim. <laughs> I mean, was that polluted? Oh. Okay, we were talking about, um, on our break, we were talking about uh, what you said. That one time you said something in your act which got the biggest laugh. Yes, and Keenan Wynn grabbed me and he said, Kid, you don't need that. I said, but that's the biggest laugh in my act. He said, you don't need it. That's a cheap laugh. Mm -hmm. And you see, it is. If I told it, I tell an off-color joke in my act, just to stress a point, it is the biggest laugh. No question, but it's no an, question, but it's an easy way to get it, and it's an embarrassed laugh. You have to think of what kind of laugh you're getting. Now, the kind of laugh that was thrilling was Jack Benny. Uh -huh. You laughed at what he was thinking, not uh -huh. what he was saying. You uh -huh. laughed when he said, yes. well. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and looked around with Because he, he let you use your imagination. Mm -hmm. You laughed at what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Uh, as I that say, I'd give anything if I could get a hold of someone like Eddie Murphy and really talk to him and say, you are a genius, you are brilliant, and you don't need this, and you have a responsibility to young people. You have a responsibility. Because if you do that, they think it's all right to say mm -hmm. that, you see? Absolutely. It's but like he'll probably the, hate me if he sees this thing, it's like but I do on, think he's a genius. Violence on TV, I feel the same way about, yeah. you know, uh, kids get the idea. Hey, let's go out and do that. You know, it sounds like fun. Yeah. looks like fun. Okay. Uh, you want to go chase Agatha's cat? Go on, chase Agatha's cat. <laughs> go chase my cat. <laughs> so whatever you do on TV or, or, or on the stage or anything Susan, like I that. Think is, I think we have another commercial. Oh, we have another commercial. My God, this show's a hit. No, I'm the one talking. Another commercial. It was always on. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> Your old pictures like that. I say, who is that? <laughs> where, where, <laughs> where is that? that was. Uh -huh. Listen, yeah. I heard that Jim Jensen wrote you a lovely letter about your show. Yeah, I want to say that I wish you two Thank everything you. good. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sweetheart. It's been, no, it's Thank been a very you. relaxed interview, and I like that. Thank you. Well, that's, you know? that's the feeling we want to get because. Uh, after all, why should you be uptight? You know, you no, just not only that, you just relax. You guys have done your homework. My baby picture, my yes. graduation <laughs> picture. I mean, gosh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Well, how many movies and things have we seen with you in it? So it's a thrill just to have you on here. Oh, Agatha, wonderful. Thank you. 
I wish our, our uh, audience could have been here in between when, when the commercials were rolling. That was really the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll just have to do without that. Yeah. Okay, we have about, uh, I guess, about two minutes. Mm -hmm. so oh, well, is, I can do anything, my dance. Is there, yeah. is there anything you'd like to talk about? Usually you're asked questions on talk shows. Um, is there anything that I think I've told you everything, mm -hmm. yeah. except that I really want people to come see my one-woman show. Definitely. When does it uh, It's going us? to open in January. Mm -hmm. I don't know the theater yet because they're waiting for an answer on three theaters, uh -huh. and I'm so proud of it. So yeah. I really feel like... Uh, and it's going to be called? Hey Ma. Hey Ma. We'll be there. Yeah. Would you visit us next, uh, next year? Absolutely. We'd really love to have you back here. And I, uh, that yeah. captain is so cute. He just, yeah, he is, isn't he? Let me see what's happening. I want to see how that photograph is doing. Uh -huh. Why does everyone give you me a, a big mouth? Time. Do I have a big mouth? <laughs> <laughs> You were in the Muppets, weren't you? Oh, yes. How'd you like that? Oh, I got like to hit to Miss Piggy. Did you? Why? Oh, because Miss Piggy's so mean. <laughs> I played flute, and I had a tuba, and she'd play triangle, and she'd try to take over all the time, and I'd take the tuba and put it right over her head. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> do, you still play, do you still play the flute and the tuba? Oh, yes. Do you? Mm -hmm. I still play the flute, not the tuba. Yeah, I know you played the tuba. Why the tuba? With, with Spike Jones, that was a trick tuba. Uh -huh. And, you know, I'd play boom, boom, boom. Bump. Then I'd empty it out, and a big tub of water would come out. <laughs> was there someone behind you doing the bump bump? No, no, no. You, I could get a sound out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could really. even with the water. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. So it was a trick spittoon he had on the bottom of it. Why the tuba? Why did you pick the tuba? Because he thought it was funny for a girl to play the tuba. Yeah. Young for all no. that to come out. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. It's really been a Listen, pleasure. God bless you both, oh. and I wish everybody. Would you go Captain over and, uh -huh. and sign up? Thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. Join, All right, us, I'll join us next week for some more fantastic guests. We'll be right be back all. next week. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thanks to you and our guests tonight. We can say we've been blessed tonight. We've had only the best tonight. Our guests and you. Everyone wants to hit their mark. And though we may have a day that's dark, everyone's got a special spark that 